Previously on The Game Show. Ryan, Nicole, I hey, Nicole, listen, listen I, I don't have any it. help right now. I'm doing this all alone. I feel for you, but that's not my problem. And we have oh, a God. Guys, can you Ryan please remove her? The top seven list is the most important I don't care. part of the show. I don't, I don't care how many Twitter is, followers you have. This episode of The Game Show is brought to you by Netflix and GoDaddy. I miss Evo. I miss their money. <laughs> Nicole? Nicole Z the Gray, yes. That was my name. I don't remember the gray part. Now, I am Nicole Z the White. Where the fuck did you come from? Funny you should ask. I struggled to set myself free. Alas, my iPhone's battery perished. Darkness took me, and I strayed out of thought and time. The stars wheeled overhead, and every day was as long as the life age of the Earth. But it was not the end. I felt life in me again. So what you're saying is you haven't played God of War yet? Oh no, I have. It totally rocks. We could not pass this night up. What's up? I am Jim. I am hanging out with you guys over the Justy's TV room. We are talking God of War 3. Hi. Too hot not to cover. Hey, everybody. I am out of the trunk. Yay! Hey. Uh, I will be in the sticker room like always with my stickers, and I will have a top seven list from you. Gweets? Hello, little bitches! It is Queens. I am also in the Justice room. We are talking God of War 3. Um, you know what's funny? Nicole always has to box, but we realize she um, doesn't actually ever introduce the game. Jim does. <laughs> so it's just there for modeling. Um, yeah, she's a lot prettier than I am, in case you guys haven't figured that out in the two I wouldn't plus say years. a lot. Guys, let's do some combo. Quick hits of news that you might have missed from this past week, starting off with more beta invites for StarCraft 2. Oh, man. Blizzard was feeling generous and decided to give people that already have beta invites to StarCraft 2 more invites for their friends. Yes, friends, come. Come play with us on Battle.net. They're going to be testing that out. I am very excited for this bit of news because friend of the show, Xbox 360 winner, Sean O sent me his extra invite. Yes! Wow. I love you, dude. We're gonna be playing this weekend. We're gonna rock out some StarCraft 2. I am so excited to get my hands on this game. It feels like it's been forever. If you're checking out the game show for the first time, this explains the true interactive nature of our show. We do a show and then you give us free shit. It's great. <laughs> and then we play it. <laughs> to yeah. be fair, we give you a lot of free shit, too. That's, that's probably we give you a great Friday shit. Night. I'd like to give you shit in StarCraft, Jim. Uh, yeah, I am actually probably going to be very terrible at this game because I'm really not the greatest at RTSs. And or that's Korean. why anytime I play against Brian Gray while I get my ass kicked. <laughs> uh, Kate and Lynch details revealed. Um, Square Enix has just announced that the uh, Kate and Lynch Dog Days will be out August 24th, even though the first game didn't really do that great critically, maybe not the best game. I didn't even know it came out. Yeah, it was it, one of those games it I kind of just went under the radar. And so the, the sequel's coming, but in other news, a movie is being made, and the screenwriter for the movie posted on his Twitter that Jamie Foxx is signed on to play Lynch. And that Lynch guy? is that guy. <laughs> He's, um, oh, yeah, exactly. The, the balding, white, bearded glasses man. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw a little film called uh, Ray Charles. <laughs> what was it called? Ray? <laughs> Ray. <laughs> I didn't see it. But uh, that guy can do anything. He can, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Kane is probably going to be played by Bruce Willis. Woo. Uncle Bruce. You should swap those. Yeah, well, I don't know. I, I, he can pull it off maybe, but weird, weird casting choice. 
I like the that. The Muppets <laughs> are coming to the iPhone. There was a new game announced this week. I think it's out. It wasn't even announced. It just came out. Show this trailer, Brian. It's starring Animal, everyone's, maybe everyone's favorite Muppet. He's one of my favorites. He's up there. It, it's, of course, a rhythm game because it's Animal. Um, the thing, I haven't checked it out yet, um, but the thing that's kind of confusing me is this trailer doesn't feature any Jim Henson music, any Muppet music. It's just kind of like generic rock. Um, I'm wondering if anyone in the rooms has bought this game. Um, yeah, Justin screaming, Animal Rock Band. I mean, it looks like fun. I'd like to play it, but only if it's got like good songs. Um, like, it, it's it, not easy being green. Like, what is sure. your Rainbow what Connection? Song the Rainbow you looking Connection? For? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I can't rock out to Rainbow Connection. Well, I can there try. Are, there are so many songs about rainbows. I stand corrected. <laughs> and that's on the other side. Um, uh, you know, is this just a quick cash in? The Muppets are coming back in a big way. There's a new Muppet movie coming and all that stuff. The Muppets are coming back they in are. a big way. Fuck you, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> it's been two years in the making, but finally, Gweez has said what's been on his mind. Guys, Dragon Age 2, did they announce? It? What the hell? I just got this beauty, Dragon Age Origins Awakening, and I opened it up to get my little disc out, and all of a sudden there's this, this little, little advertisement. <laughs> and uh, all right, all right. And I'm looking at, I, I kind of glance at it, and up at the top of the, the corner it says 0201 2011. Now That's at first, this year. I thought it said, I thought it said 0201 2010, and I was like, Great, Bioware. Thanks for letting me know about uh, a month ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I looked a little bit closer and realized that uh, I should probably get a new prescription. And what is what is what does that date mean? I'm saying I'm saying it's going to be Dragon Age 2 because Bioware did announce uh, a top of uh, quarter uh, quarter one of 2011. We can expect more uh, more Dragon Age and more Mass Effect. So maybe it's coming. Maybe. I like your optimism, buddy. All right, so a new Lord of the Rings RPG. Six months ago, a trademark was filed for the Lord of the Rings War in the North. And Warner Brothers Interactive announced, I believe yesterday, that an RPG is being made by the same company that made Champions of Noroth and Justice League Heroes, um, Snowblind Studios. It's gonna be an RPG, uh, up to three player co-op online. It's, uh, it's Lord of the Rings, you guys. Does that make a good game? Yeah. I can't play, it, well, it I have an emotional play. attachment to it already. You well, know? you are Nicole Z the White. Well, it's Nicole Z the White approved. That is true. <laughs> but I mean, if you like Dragon Age so much, don't you think that there's potential for a Lord of the Rings RPG to just yes. rock? To take it back, singing in the dark in the chat room is saying that the Dragon Age sequel is going to be called Dragon Age Pure Crack. <laughs> <laughs> just Pure Crack. Uh, um, yeah. Not by Aware announced yet, though. Not no. by Aware Crack. And War in the North. Uh, it's funny, when I go to the bathroom, I like to call it War in the South. That wow. Oh. That sounds like one of my lines. <laughs> <laughs> guys. All right, um, let's see here. Another iPhone story here coming in. Uh, Trash Apple get banned. Um, this was coming off of Kotaku today. Uh, last week, game developer Tommy Rafines, he was uh, he publicly called Apple's App Store awful and horrible. <laughs> this week, <laughs> Apple yanked his game. His Damn. game was Zits and Giggles. Have you seen this, Brian? We got a clip of it. I think we got a couple pictures. It's a it's pimple popping game for the iPhone <laughs> and iPod Touch. <laughs> but these guys also made that game Cannibal. If you play that one where you run, yeah. So their their game got taken down because he called the App Store a piece of shit. Well, not in those exact words, but he did like it to Tiger's um, handheld games from the 80s and 90s, if you ever played those little LCD games. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's a pretty low blow. So what we've learned there is that Apple will not tolerate that. I wonder if they have an app to delete apps. Like, is there an app for that? Of course there is. Probably. There's an app for everything. Probably. If yeah. they insult themselves, then what happens? I don't know. Those guys did really funny things, though. When people stopped buying their game, they kept doubling the price until it went up to $400, and someone bought that game for 400 bucks. <laughs> And that's Combo! Woo! Guys, it's Brian here. Let's talk Netflix. Get movies and your favorite TV shows delivered right to your door. Sign up now and start streaming all of Netflix's amazing content right to your PC or Mac. You can even watch right on your TV with your gaming console. Stream as much stuff as you want and keep the DVDs as long as you want and never worry about paying a late fee. You can support the game show just by signing up for a free trial. You get an entire month free when you go to netflix.com slash game show. If you don't use our URL, you'll only get the two-week trial, so make sure to use ours for the full month. And once you sign up, show me your instant queue, and I'll show you mine. Back to you guys. We got some more story for you. 
Uh, Guiz, you came across a, an article in The Guardian. Great story on The Guardian this week, The Guardian UK's games blog. If you're interested in the subject of voice over acting in video games, I highly encourage you to read this thing. Um, it's really cool. Um, basically, they're talking about why is video game voice acting inconsistent? Why isn't it um, being held to the same standard, or why isn't it good? And they, um, they interviewed this guy, Andy Emery, who's a creative director at Side, who produces a lot of this stuff, and he's saying that you know it's improving all the time, but there's a lack of focus and story on character in games. And they cite Heavy Rain as one of the things. Now, what did you guys think of the voice acting in Heavy Rain? Oh, it was terrible. It was terrible. Uh, of all the things oh, in Heavy just Rain, it's it flat. wasn't my least favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> Jason! <laughs> Jason! 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 Well, they were saying sometimes that a mediocre script can contribute to the problems in Heavy Rain, you know, where key snippets of dialogue are so labored and cliche-ridden, they just kind of eject you out of the experience. Yeah, totally. And uh, I already see Natalie over there. We're going to get it. She's so ready to chuck <laughs> it. She totally knows what we're talking about. What's weird is the way that they make the video game voiceover. Sometimes you're just looking at a spreadsheet with a bunch of lines sort of out of order, no context, you're in an isolated room, and a lot of guys are saying this has to change. We need to be doing better performance capture, vocap, a lot of different things, and making games more about the emotional experience, less about the visceral. Let's do a little bit of community check-in. Sure. Nicole, we had a couple of fucking awesome donations. Uh, Vincent uh, donated. We got one from uh, Astrophysics. We definitely appreciate that. Um, see, there's Tom and Rob. I'm just gonna say your first names here, guys. Oh, didn't we say last week if we donate, if they <laughs> donated, Nicole would give us a teabag face? Oh, wait, I, I think, I do believe <laughs> I recall that is exactly why so many people donated. Nicole, Nicole. that's not a no, teabag face. No, it's not a teabag face. <laughs> nice that's try. Not work. That's not gonna go again. <laughs> once more, with feeling. That's not that. that uh, what is that? Where's the tea bag? It's got to be in the. No, yeah. no, 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 no. All right. Not again. I think Brian. <laughs> Brian wants something. What do you want, boss? What do you want? Do, do I have to cut in here yes. on the real on the real thing? Hold on a second. Ring. We. You were like during the live show. It's not in the edit, but you're like, no, that's not enough. I need like fifty bucks, and some of those guys drop fifty bucks. Yeah. You give them the tea bag face, and you do it now, What's lady. What's the tea bag face? Like, what do you want me to do? Just look up, and open your mouth a little. <laughs> None other than the voice of Pandora herself. So excited for her to be here. Natalie Lander, ladies and gentlemen, Woo! over at the chats. Woo! Finally, look at that. She's been waiting patiently to jump in on that discussion. Uh, when Guise was talking about the voice acting, I, I could feel the energy over there. You were just like, I, w I want to talk about this. How do you feel about that, that article? <laughs> really interesting that you guys talk about the voice acting because a lot of it is done in sort of this solitary confinement uh, way, which is really opposite from acting. And actually, when we were doing God of War, we uh, did most of the voice acting with the other actors, which was really a great thing. Awesome. So you were working with like TK Carson and, and some of those? Yeah, we actually did scenes together and they did motion capture while we were there, and it was a lot more organic experience. That's than other awesome. games that I've done, yeah. Yeah, because you talked to, uh, when when we did uh, the Cyber Spy, uh, one of the concerns that one of the actors had was like, oh God, we're all gonna get replaced. And it's like, no, this is great. This is actually more work for actors because, again, we're still in that uncanny valley, but regardless of that, you need genuine emotion. You need actors, you need people that are there voicing this stuff to make it believable, Act to make it real, to draw you in. And real writers, not programmers, writing yes. dialogue. Do you ever see dialogue sometimes? Not on God of War, but you know, you don't need to name names, but you can tell like that wasn't written by a great writer. Well, it's hard when you're doing um, games that are being translated. Like, mm. I've done a lot of games that are translated from probably Japanese into English and the translations are always off and then you're also trying to fit to the part of the game that's already been animated to the original language that it's done in. Oh, okay. So you're sort of confined and I think that's why it comes across as sort of uh, you know robotic or you know unemotional and do they, crappy. <laughs> do they let you do any kind of like if it is a translated script and it's just like uh, this doesn't really make sense or it's not you know it's it's kind of tripping off your tongue are you able to kind of reshape that there well do they let you do that or is it like no stick to the script um usually we have to stick very closely to the script because of the art that's already been made for it mm. um so you don't really have freedom and you also have to stay really close to the mouth of the character if it's already been done if like we're redoing the game um, for games that are you know originally done in English then mm -hmm. it's not you have a little more leeway oh okay 
What's funny is like um, I, I heard that when you guys were talking about coming on the show, like you even you're not like a big gamer, and that's totally cool. We get that. Like, but like you, you didn't even realize like, like the you. scope of God of War. Like this is one of the biggest games, if not the biggest game of the year, already here in March. That's Amen. like kind of interesting to me. Amen. Yeah, like, like you can be in a hit. Like this is the avatar of gaming right now. You know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, this thing got a war. Whatever. <laughs> That's the thing. Is like when I, when I found out, I'm like, you know, I just overheard Natalie's conversation with someone. She's like, yeah, I'm just doing this, boys. I don't know. It's this game called God of War Three, and I was just like, are you kidding? That game. Is gonna be huge. You're gonna be in the game of the year. I don't know if that means anything to you, but that's like that's awesome. And you also did work uh, in Final Fantasy uh, Dissidia and uh, the upcoming right Blur. Blur. It's not out yet, right? Right. Only the beta's out right now. Right. Now, what kind of lines do you have in Blur? I mean, you don't have to give it away or anything, but it's a car game. Like faster. Like that's the kind of thing you say. I don't know if it's very story driven. <laughs> Um, the, in the Blur game is really funny. Um, all I remember was there's, there's a lot of yelling in the game <laughs> because the, apparently the cars are really loud. And um, it's also, a, whatever character I play, she's kind of a raunchy, dirty character, which <laughs> I really like. <laughs> Typecasting. That and sounds horrible. <laughs> Natalie, <laughs> you're getting a lot of love from the chat room. Uh, uh, even from somebody, uh, from, from a frequent viewer bottom, is saying, you're making his latent heterosexuality take over. Oh. Yeah, you're turning him from gay to straight. <laughs> There's also him. a lot of discussion. I guess they're calling you like Pandora, like from Avatar the Planet, and they're saying you have luscious forests. So you guys, you know, she can see the chat room. Yeah, she, she, and her mother is in no. the chat room, too. I shaved today, guys. Her <laughs> mother <laughs> is in the chat room. Now you're playing the game show. Sure. <laughs> this game is the most like a film project than any other game that I've ever worked on, and maybe Time any other long. film that I've ever yeah. worked on. <laughs> but I mean, we did a t we did a table read with the cast and the director and the voice director, and it was a really big, long process. And then, you know, when we were um, recording the game, we were actually also shooting it. So my lines were on a teleprompter on a camera that was filming me. So a lot of my own facial expressions are incorporated into the character. Was that just a camera, or was there like, I guess there was no mocap balls or anything on your face? There's no balls on your well, face, yeah. is, is basically what Gwades is asking. <laughs> Where are your balls on your face? <laughs> Wait, that's a whole other <laughs> topic. <laughs> that's how you got the role. Right. <laughs> Jack Hunter's asking, did your agent get you this, or someone like, like that, or was this an open casting? I guess there's some, you know, some uh, guys who want to break into voice acting here just wondering how this happened for you. Um, yeah, no, I, I have a voiceover agent that represents me. And it was just a normal process of auditioning. I somehow got called. I actually worked with the voice director before. So I got called in to the casting. And then, you know, I got called back and worked with the studio and things like that. And then eventually got the part. Sweet. When you beat the game, there's a great little featurette on the voice acting. And you're in that. And a bunch of people did some really fun deals yeah. back there. <laughs> So you I should definitely check that, that out. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit of God of War. Nat, if you want to jump in, you have anything you want to say about this game while you're looking at the footage, please, you're more than welcome to. I think the game is amazing. But I'm left with a couple of little stumpers there of like why that was the way it was. What did you guys think? Uh, I personally, I loved it. I mean, just the scale of it was incredible. And we were talking before the show about how it was a game that you just wanted to finish. Um, I so badly want to get to the end of this game. And there's many games that I will just put down after barely playing or playing enough of, or I'll get to a point where it's like frustrating. There were several points in this game that I was frustrated a little bit by the puzzles. The puzzles can be challenging, especially when you're stupid. <laughs> there's not enough blood in the Nicole. puzzles. Nicole didn't want to do them. Yeah, there's just no violence or fighting or any, no one dies during the puzzles. <laughs> It's just like thinking. <laughs> There's not enough death for you in this game? During the puzzles. Uh, I don't want to take a death break. You need a death break. <laughs> um, I really like this. I mean, this is my first God of War. I wasn't allowed to play the first or second. Um, because you were 12. Well, I don't think I was. I may have been 13, like 14. 13. Well, oh yeah. my god. No, you I were not. Were you actually 14 when God of War came out? I, I was pretty young, you guys. Uh, How young? Tell How us. long ago did it come out? Uh, God of War 1 was like six years ago, five yeah. years ago? Oh, well, then no. I was like 16, 17. Damn, fantasy so the, pop. Protective parents, <laughs> protective. So I, this is my first like you know experience with the, with the franchise, and I really didn't need any background. Didn't really need to know the context of why I'm so angry. I just accepted it, and I'm going to kill everyone that comes by me, and I have really long chains on my sword, so I don't even need to be that close to somebody to brutally kill them. 
Win? <laughs> Win. No, this game is definitely epic to find. Um, it's about 10 hours long. I think it took me like 12, but I'm a smoker, so I put the game down a lot. I hit pause, I walk away. <laughs> you can't play this game and smoke anything. Yeah, um, true. You, you kind of, it, it demands your attention at all times. Um, otherwise, it, it's a pretty well-paced experience. I do think there's some stuff that happens in the very middle of the game, in like the height of Act 2, that make it very difficult for what comes later to top. It's cool the yeah. whole time, but it almost reaches this crescendo and you're like, nothing's gonna beat this. Nothing's there were so many times that I was just sitting there with my jaw on the floor because I was like, are you kidding? Did I seriously just rip that guy's head off and use him? Yeah. Like, that's you amazing. <laughs> one thing I really liked about this game that was an improvement over one and two was the fact that I'm not the best at uh, the quick time events. Events. I'm just not. Where you have to push X or square or do yeah. a squiggly thing. Especially when it's covering the action or when it's near the action enough that it's like I'm too focused on the quick time event happening that I'm not paying attention to the animation. And the animation is so violent and amazing that it's like I don't want to be overly concerned with what buttons I should be pushing. But this one, they put them off to the sides, Wasn't respectively, on the controller. So it's like periphery. I can see which buttons I should be using, but I should also be able, and I am able, to pay attention to, to the, the wonderfully gory things that I'm shoving <laughs> into things. And, oh, and the guts God. coming out of oh. the stomach. It's great. I hate any um, quick time event that involves a thumbstick. I felt like it had a, a lot of difficulty sort of picking up when, when, if it's like a half circle, how to do that. Like, especially, yeah, those like Medusa guys, yeah. things like that. And also sometimes, you know, like these are little nitpicks, but like sometimes I would pull the R1 to open a chest and it would slip off. Yeah. That happened to Jim as well. R1 yeah. in general, that happened to me. Very often. You had to be right in front of the chest, right in front of the things you grapple onto, and it was just, I fell off a lot. Not gonna lie. The platforming <laughs> has always been kind of the weakest element of God of War. Um, it's fun, but it's just. Everything else is so smooth and so refined and so awesome. And then, like, kind of, you reach these parts and you just like miss a ledge by an inch, and this awesome guy just dies. Magma Man says, "Wow, the camera movement looks pretty awesome." Yes, uh, the second thumbstick is for you to roll and avoid. Like, I'm used to that being able to control my camera, so not being able to do that. I mean, there were several times where I would just be trying to change my camera and just rolling, but the camera itself follows really well. Like, it definitely points you in the directions that you should be going and it gives you a good view of what you want to be accomplishing. Black Mesa is the game coming out for PC, never. I do think overall it's an amazing looking game. I, I did beat it and you know what? I'm not sure what the trilogy is about anymore. I can't, I don't want to spoil anything, but I'm not sure what it was all for. All the brutality, all the vengeance, the whole thing. Uh, you're gonna go out and buy a PS3 and play this, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> I know, they should have, they, I didn't even get a copy of the game. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What did they give you though, Natalie, and what did you do with it? Well, I'm really embarrassed to admit this, but when we recorded, um, they gave me like a mug that's a God of War and a t-shirt, uh, actually a couple t-shirts, <laughs> and I didn't really know what it was, and I'm really girly, and I was like, I don't, I don't want this, so I threw it away. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, man, you have oh. Oh. Is this the game that will make me buy a PS3? Well, Uncharted 2 is the game you should have bought a PS3 for. Well, there's but enough PS3 the exclusives out there. Well, then, you can no, get it's not the game bucks, right? that you buy a PS3 for. It's definitely one of the top games to say, like, yeah, you should own a PS3. This game is fucking awesome. With playability, <laughs> is there is there any... You guys want to play this game again? Gwee, do you beat it? Is there any replayability with this? There's some challenges. There's a few things like that I might kick on. I don't know. I don't. So really is it a rent? Could you just rent this? You could. Other than, you know, you you're could. the kind of person who wants it in your library? Exactly. Like, I'm a guy who likes to, you know, proudly display my thousands of pieces of media on the wall. I'm not kidding. We'll bring pictures. <laughs> but no, no, you could, you could rent it. You could rent this game and go through it in, like, two to three sittings, maybe. All right. More paying the bills. Let's do a little GoDaddy. Your website visitors, prospects, and customers are wary of websites and online businesses that aren't what they claim to be and worried that their personal and financial information might fall into the wrong hands. Turn your visitors' concerns into a competitive advantage with the ironclad protection of GoDaddy.com Secure Certificate. Check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for a list of all the amazing GoDaddy deals from Revision 3. And when you go there, make sure that you enter the promo code TGS3. And that'll give you $7.49.com domain registrations.
never get tired of. <laughs> hey, Nicole, just out of curiosity, what's in your box? Um, my box, in my box has Pass the Pigs. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Pass the Pigs in my box. My box has a motto, it's let the good swines roll. Yeah, wow. in my box. Yeah, you can do some special moves in order to be the top hog in my box. You can do the snouter. <laughs> Big fan of the snouter in my box. The cider, the razorback, so my favorite. <laughs> Pig out of my box, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Gweeds, I have to wonder, what's in your box? Well, uh, I'm choking my, what's in my box? It's, uh, I'm choking the cock blaster. No, chicken blaster, chicken blaster. This is a, uh, it's abused chicken. Look, he's clearly abused. He's got white junk all over his face. It's a game where you shoot mad chickens. Mad chickens, dude. Uh, you got two player shooter. You got two players shooting head to head. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. If you can shoot some cock head to head. In your box? In your in my box. <laughs> my box is all about the cock blaster. Wow. That hey is Jim. A loose box. Jim, what's in your box? Oh, just a little something I like to call gallop and ride. <laughs> yeah. Oh. As if horse chicks aren't Jeez. sexy and crazy enough. You guys can train, groom, and massage your horses with the Wii Remote. <laughs> um, oh, that I looks filthy. All Nintendo games. <laughs> now, I'm very excited to ask the following question, and it's a question that's been floating around the chat room, but Natalie, what's in Pandora's box? Oh, <laughs> that is a question I don't ever get tired of, can I show think. Us, can show, them? <laughs> show us, show us Pandora's box. box. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh, it's shiny. Yeah. It's a, it's a big box. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So um, I have box. <laughs> my perfect prom. Oh. <laughs> this is an underage box. I think we're not allowed to show this. So we're just going to end that right now. <laughs>
this nice game of the week, uh, God of War, has shown us that being in shape is really important. It's Kratos really, I mean, he obviously works out. He obviously I'll gets say. those power boosts when he goes to Jamba Juice. Like, he does it the right way. These characters, they totally use steroids. They're cheaters. Number seven. Coltrane. Yeah, Augustus <laughs> Cole. Uh, he was a former Thrash Ball player, number 83, if anyone is interested. Before enlisting in the COG army, uh, he is uh, known as Cole, Coltrane, Coltrane Ooh. Baby, if you want to be correct there. Pretty He's at awesome. 6'4", his arms are probably bigger than like four of me, <laughs> uh, which he probably got by juicing up. Different kind of juice, not the emulsion. Here's <laughs> a war joke, a here's a war joke! Um, yeah, no, he, he used steroids. Bring it on, sucker. Uh, Machamp. Yeah, uh, Machamp is a evolved <laughs> form of uh, Machoke and Machop. And he's over five feet tall and has four arm arms. They come in handy because he's a fighting type. Um, so he, if he uses steroids, it's probably his like trainer's fault, which is why I want to take this opportunity to announce my running platform for when I run for um, city government as uh, starting pet up people for the ethical treatment of Pokemon. If anyone, so wants, if anyone wants to sign up, if anyone wants to sign up, let me know because it's not okay to give your your Pokemon steroids. Rare candies occasionally, but it's gonna ruin their stats. Okay? Zing! <laughs> yeah. Yeah! Bye, uh, Mike Hagger. Uh, Mike Hagger. You can call him Hagger though, because he doesn't mind. Doesn't mind me shortening it. He's from the final fight, and uh, he is a former professional wrestler. Um, in New York, who became the mayor of, um, let's see. Uh, Merle Haggard, funny DCD. <laughs> he became the mayor of Metro City. Um, dealing with crime is really difficult, and he has to fight the game, the gang, the Mad Gear gang, and in order to have a, a fight, to fight justice, he had to take steroids. Four. <laughs> a Bobo. Yeah, HSV recommended this one for me. Uh, he is a boss in Double Dragon, and he is muscular and deformed, and has a really big head, and he it's throws an his enemy. I'm an owl. <laughs> what kind of messed up owls do you have? Um, he takes steroids. <laughs> yeah, relevant. Three. It's uh, is it Zangief? He's a professional wrestler in the Street Fighter series. Um, he made his debut in Street Fighter Two. He uh, represents the Soviet Russia when he fights. And um, one of the common side effects of taking steroids is actually ankle hair. And if you can look back at that picture, you'll realize. Ew, it's just it's, oh, it's, it's peaking, just but you know what? I have ankle hair. And you, and you clearly Can we not steroids. get a close up on that? <laughs> He's oh. He doesn't bend that way. <laughs> two! Uh, number two is the tanks in Left 4 Dead. They are the biggest and fastest and strongest of all the zombies in Left 4 Dead, which I assume they were just really strong, fast people who became zombies. There's really no backstory to that, but how do you be really strong and really fast by taking steroids and eating mm -mm. brains? Probably, I wonder if they prefer the brains of people who took steroids. Whoa. Think about it, on Whoa. your own time. Uh, number one, number one is Rossi. Yeah, <laughs> Rossi is the cheer for a polar bear from Muscle March. Um, when he's like pumping iron and posing uh, while running through walls, he likes to relax in his home country of Norway. Um, if you played Muscle March, which we did on the show a few weeks ago, there's a lot of muscular people, because there are some chicks, I don't know why, um, in the game, and they may not look as muscular as Rossi, but I assure you, under all that fur, six pack. Ripped. Steroid abs. fish. Is yeah. number one? Number one. Woo! Yes, I'm saying! Hey, hey, hey. No. What happened to Kratos? Why wasn't Kratos on that list? Because he exercises the right way. Oh. By ripping shit <laughs> off of spines. I just and gouging thought... your eyeballs. I... Yeah. Thank you, dear sweet Natalie Lander, for joining us on the game show. The next time you voice a character in a video game, you are more than welcome to come back on. We would love having you, and the guys and girls loved seeing Girl. you. Girl, in a yeah, <laughs> your mom. Mm -hmm. Your mom loved <laughs> seeing you on the show. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. It was awesome. I had nothing to do on a Friday, so it was perfect. Yay! Wow. <laughs> Neither do we. <laughs> Nicole. <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, Buck Beak. I didn't say it before, so by God of War, I'm saying it's a bye. Right. I am Gleeds. Good night. Good night, guys. See you next time. <laughs>